Hi everybody, this is Roxy and I had a few requests on how to make the little bag, card bags that I came up with last week. I made about a dozen of these I think or more actually for my craft sale and I only have one left so I would call these a really hot seller. Um, I think they just look cute and adds a little to it and they're super easy to make. Um, I did mine on my silhouette. I don't have one to show you because, like I said, there's only one or two left and I couldn't find them in my um, craft sale stuff because I haven't gone through it all yet. But this is how the topper was on the ones I made. I have this on my silhouette, this topper. And with these, you can um, measure these so that if you've got some border punches or whatever or border dies you can certainly do that on the bottom I'm just using my um, deco uh, corner punch from we are memory keepers because <clears throat> I really don't have these are masculine and I don't really have a masculine punch which kind of makes me think I better get some first you know anyways um, so I'll show you how to do this these are just the three that I made right this morning this is for a swap over on your paper pantry, and it's um, masculine cards. So that's what they're going to look like, and I will show you how to do it. <clears throat> so we all set, oh, where'd those go? All right, so all you need to do is cut one piece of paper um, 12 by what is it, five and three quarters. These are four A2 cards, which are four and a quarter by five and a half. And they fit the five by seven cellophane bags. So the, the cards do, okay? So this is going to be five and three quarters, just so you got a little extra room on either side for the, you know, the bags and the envelopes and whatnot. All right, so... Cut one piece 12 by 5 and 3 quarters. And then the other piece, and this is for the topper. This is 5, five inches this way and 5 and 3 quarters this way. And then you're going to fold it this way. And that will create this little topper piece. Um, if you want to do a border, I would add probably half an inch on either side um, or even a quarter of an inch. You might want to test your border punch out because some are deeper than others and need more paper. But anyway, so we're going to do it without a border, but like I said, just add whatever you need to accommodate that border. Alright, so those are cut out. And then we got to score both of them. The room. Okay, so the first piece we want to score it. You want to find the center, which is six inches. Okay, so you want to find the center, which is six inches, and then you want to go a quarter of an inch on either side. So you'll score it at five and three quarters, and then also at six and a quarter. That's for the big piece. And for the middle piece, you want to do so the um, longer edge is vertical. And that you're just going to, it's five inches, so we're just going to do two and a half. Again, if you add um, extra on either side for the border punches, just figure out where that center is. So then. I kind of just like to fold everything now. Blue everywhere. Okay. And then I'm just going to do my corner punches. So that one's done. And then we'll fold this into the corners. OK. 
Okay. So now we got to do the ovals and I will bring my machine over. Okay, so we want to do this oval first. And we first want to find the center of this card. Oops, and I bring the oval up about an inch or so. So this is five and three quarters. So the center would be two and seven eighths. I'm just going to draw a little dot there for when I put the oval on. I have two ovals, just the plain Spellbinders oval dies. I think this is um, the largest one and then about the third one. So it's that much of a difference in sizes. Put my oval on there and kind of eyeball. I just eyeball it all. Just get the middle and the... You figure the cut line's about here. So that's about an inch or so. And then I just like to use a little piece of washi. That's seen better days. Oops. And... Top on, run it through. And there's that. Okay. Then for the topper, we want to make that oval up here, that handle. So for that, you're going to put the fold line right up to the edge of your plate and use the smaller, oop, I lied, use the larger die and again kind of find the center. This one I'm just eyeballing. <clears throat> because of the plaid I can see that center. And then we're going to put that back. I'm going to hold this up so I can make the sandwich. You just want to find that. Make sure that's over. And there's your sandwich. This is the hardest part of the whole project. Keeping that straight. Now here's a tip to keep my mats really flat because these are super old and they're really flat. When you run it through, bring the, old, the top one and put it on the bottom and then the bottom one, flip it and use it on top. Trust me, here, this is as curled as they'll ever get. Okay, so that one's done. And that came out pretty good. So now we want to put the little one on. The little worn out piece of washi. And if you can see that, you're just going to eyeball this too. This one we want to cut the whole oval out. Okay, so again, try that trick. It really works well. I've never had to replace, I haven't had to replace a plate I bet in three years doing it that way. There. And then when I get done, I always put it, I always put the plates the way they're supposed to. So move the top plate to the bottom, don't flip it. And then the bottom plate, flip it to the top. And there's that. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Alright, so with these I did distress the edges just to kind of give it some depth and a little more color. I didn't distress the edges of the Christmas ones because they were just really bright papers and I didn't think it needed it.
I love this paper. It's, I think it's Farmhouse, Farmhouse Paper Company or something. It's old, so I don't even know if they're around still. <clears throat> All right, so now for the assembly, we're just gonna, I just put a line of glue or adhesive here and here, and another one right up to that bottom of that oval and on the bottom. And you can use ATG gun, you can use glue, you can use red line tape, and I just got this all over. Or score tape. But you do want a kind of a good sturdy glue or adhesion. adhesion. <clears throat> all right, pull these up together. And then when I put this down, I put this to the top of that. And like that. And then just make sure these are nice and lined up. And put this down. And there it is. And we'll do a little decor. These are so old, they're not even sticky anymore. It's kind of funny. It actually has sunflower seeds, which is guys love. Wow. Women too. <clears throat> there. And then I just put a little. And then what I like about this is the. Uh, and you don't have to put your cards in cellophane, but it kind of makes it look like there's a window in there, which is kind of nice. But you certainly don't have to do that. But these, I'm not kidding. They. There was about four things that I sold completely out, and there weren't a lot of people at this sale. In fact, it was kind of a crappy thing. Just all the ladies from the church were there, and none of them were buying anything. But I somehow managed to do okay. And like I said, I sold out these. I sold out my, ouch, my um, reminder books, and... My mini albums that I did, and some oh my um those shaker birthday cards that I made with the packaging from the Dollar Tree butterflies, those went like right now. They went really fast. So I've got a. I am actually thinking of um, buying more of those butterflies. You know, buck a pack just to make these cards because I made enough profit on the cards themselves that, you know, a buck for supply is not a bad deal. All right, so then I can put my little cards inside that I've got to make envelopes for and I completely forgot. And there it is. So I hope you give it a try and certainly use a border punch. Um, like I said, just try the bar, you know, How's I how's I do it? I cut out a two inch strip of scrap paper, do my border punch, and then figure out you know then measure it again, and figure out that the the difference is how much extra you'll need on your piece on both sides if you do a border punch. Otherwise the silhouette, you know you can make your own topper. I made this part and this part on the silhouette. And I know there's a file um, like this one that you can purchase, but I had let my subscription run out on the silhouette, so I just made it myself. So, anyways, there you go, and thanks for watching. I hope you give it a try. Bye-bye.